our, our philosophy here at the University of Toledo first, before we even get to 425 defense, is that only good things happen when you run to the football. And we're, we're trying to teach our kids that, that we know that you didn't come out of the womb knowing how to run to the football. You didn't, you didn't come to us as a high school football player understanding exactly what we're looking for in terms of running to the football. And, and we grade our guys each day in practice uh, in terms of extra effort plays and uh, number of loafs. And, and we break down a loaf into several different categories, the first of which is any time we see a change of speed on film, that is a defensive back or a linebacker when the ball is thrown, if you're not maximum effort to the football, or let's say a defensive lineman's rushing the passer and he sees the football thrown and he doesn't turn and sprint to the ball, uh, 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 if, if you see a change of speed on film, that means those guys are not giving you maximum effort. And uh, we grade that every day and, and we try to communicate with our players as much as possible about the importance of running to the football, uh, certainly a change of speed. The, the number two area is turning down a hit. Anytime you see an opportunity to be physical, we talk about specifically in the secondary of being physical with wide receivers and, and tight ends and running backs and anybody who comes to us. If you turn down a hit, that's a loaf. Okay? And uh, the next area is if you get knocked down and you don't get back up immediately, then that's a loaf. Okay? And uh, obviously the fourth area is if we don't start in a, in a proper football stance, proper football position, then that's a loaf, okay? And so we try, to, we try to talk to our guys about let's start with the basis of just running to the football. And if we'll run, then only good things will happen uh, uh, when you run to the football. And, 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 and we talk to our guys specifically about skidding your heels on the pile. You see those, you see those old cartoons all the time, and, and you see those skid marks as they're getting to wherever they go. We, we, show, we show our guys a, a picture of the Roadrunner cartoon, and, and, uh, and him skidding his heels when, when, he, when he's running, and uh, they get a big kick out of it, and I think they just begin to understand and have a picture of exactly what we're talking to them about. And the other thing we try to do is show them NFL film and, and, and film of guys like uh, you know, programs like USC and Ohio State and Texas and, and all those great programs across the country, and, and, and they don't, not only have great players and, and, uh, and, and great schemes and, and all that, but they, they play with maximum effort. And so uh, if we can get our guys sold on that, run into the football first and foremost, then, uh, then we'll have an opportunity to be a great defense. You know, not only do we want to run to the football, but when you, when you show those kids that film and you show your guys, the, uh, the guys that are going to the NFL, and, 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 and if you're a high school coach and you're showing your kids the guys that are going to the Division I level, you can show them what, what type of player you're looking for just by stopping the, stopping the film when the ball is tackled and just show them the distance they are from the football. If it's in pass coverage, we try to talk to our guys in pass coverage about breaking one-third the distance the ball is in the air. So let's say the quarterback throws the football 30 yards. When that ball is released, from the time it's released to the time it's caught, if the ball's thrown 30 yards, then we want everybody on our football team breaking a minimum of 10 yards. And that's a reasonable goal to accomplish if you've got them sold on the fact that only good things happen when you run to the football. And that, and, and that motto not only is good for the secondary and, and, and the linebackers, but also the defensive linemen because in, in the 4-2-5, you're dropping those guys out in pass coverage all the time and not just the, not just the defensive end. Sometimes you drop out a nose guard or a three technique and, and, uh, and depending on what you're doing uh, uh, with the ends, it, it could be both ends, not just a weak side defensive end. And so by showing our guys on film exactly where they are uh, in terms of loafing and where they are in relationship to the football when the whistle's blown, the echo of the whistle, and then uh, they'll have an idea of what we're looking for and, and, and how those guys play that do make it to the NFL or, or, or do make it to the Division I college football level and, uh, and, and play for the national championship and the conference championship every year. So it starts with a mentality. It starts with a rocket mentality of playing hard and understanding exactly what we're looking for from an effort standpoint. The next thing, when we, when we came in here this past December, we talked about what do we want to do from a defensive standpoint. 
you see all kinds of, of different schemes out there and, and, and everything from a 4-3 to a 3-4 to a 4-2-5. The bottom line is these days you get all these combines all over the country and everybody wants to know what's your 40 time or what's your 100 meter time if you're a track guy. We think that we want to put the most speed on the football field possible. And uh, a couple years ago, I heard uh, Coach Urban Meyer down at the University of Florida talking about, we, we feel like we have the fastest football team in the country. Now, we don't claim to have the fastest football team in the country here at the University of Toledo, but what we want to do is we want to take the fastest guys we feel like can be put in a position to, to make plays, and we're going to put those guys on the football field. Because when you sit down and think about it and, and, you see, and you think about how much spread offense not only we're seeing across the country but specifically in our conference, in the, the Mid-American Conference, with great quarterbacks and great wide receivers and running backs that we face, they're going to get you in a situation where you're, you're in a 4-2 box. One way or the other, they're going to find a way to get you in a 4-2 box. And with the, with the uh, amount of quarterback run you see, uh, not only the ride and the side uh, uh, run, but the quarterback power, the quarterback zone. I spent the last three football seasons at, at Marshall University, and it was a real privilege to be there. One of the, one of the unique uh, challenges we had for the last three seasons was facing a quarterback at West Virginia named Pat White. And uh, there's no question in, in my mind that everybody uh, that's listening tonight has an idea who he is and, and his talent and his ability and what he did for that West Virginia program. But the best thing they did with him is they would put him back here there in an empty formation, and he was a quarterback in the shotgun, but really he was a, he was the running back, and so they they, they got you uh, uh, gapped out, and he's the running back, and so uh, you had to make a, a a decision as to whether or not you wanted to defend him with an extra hat or you wanted to split it out and uh, and and play with a short box, and then if that was the case, then they would just read you and throw the now route out there to Steve Slayton. And that was a pretty good combination for, for, for West Virginia. It was extremely difficult for us to defend and, and, and got me to thinking because we, we, we were a 4-3 football team at, at Marshall and uh, that thought we did a decent job, but uh, we just didn't feel like we had enough speed out there uh, to combat a guy like Pat White. Now, not many people in the country have a guy that com can combat Pat White, but uh, a lot of people across the country are playing with a guy uh, – uh, of similar ability, maybe just not the speed or the versatility that Pat White does. But they're going to get you in a situation where they're going to play you in a 4-2 box. They're going to force you into that 4-2 box. Now, you've got a decision on the back end what kind of coverage concepts you want to run. If, if you want to open the middle or do you want to close the middle. Now, that's all, that's all X's and O's talk, and we're going to get into that a little bit later. But we want to get our maximum speed on the football field and uh, – and, and in order to do that, we feel like here at the University of Toledo that that's in a 4-2-5 defense. And uh, that, that hybrid position that everybody's looking for, we call our star here. And that guy is a, is a, is a, is a, is a guy who's a, who we train as a safety, and he, and he specifically plays our star position. And he's got to have the ability not only to blitz, but he's got to have the ability to play some man-to-man -man coverage. He's got to have the ability to play a curl-flat technique. And in some of our defenses, he's got to be able to spend to the middle of the football field. And so that guy is, is a guy that uh, we feel like is a very unique uh, uh, player, and that's the reason why we call him the star. And so uh, uh, we called him the star at, uh, at, at Ohio State when I was there, and we called him the star at, uh, at Marshall, and uh, we're calling him the star here, and that's because we feel like that guy has to have some pretty unique talents and abilities to play that position. And, and it doesn't necessarily have to be a safety um, it could be a big corner, okay? He just got to have a, a, a little bit of a, a little bit of a, 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 a bulk to him, such that if they get you in a situation where he's got to come in support to run, that he has the ability to do that. Not only versus a wide receiver, but also versus a tight end uh, formation. If they were to put your formation into the boundary, the next thing is you guys follow along on the slides. Uh, we we talk about not only did we sit down and we talked to spend extensive. Uh, amount of time talking about why why we should do the four two five defense, but we talked about why not, and 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 when you look about it, and and and, and we've been recruiting here for for uh, for three weeks, and and uh, not just uh, three weeks uh, has this dawned upon us, but over the over the test of time, it, it's it's very very difficult to find those big time linebackers 
that can come in and play that and play that spot. And you never can have enough of those guys. And so we feel like, from a standpoint of of, uh, uh, of what we're doing and who we're facing and what we want to try to do uh, try to do defensively, that it just doesn't make any sense to uh, to put a, a Sam linebacker out there and try to uh, force him to uh, play in space. And he's not used to that. Now, who are we recruiting, guys? We're recruiting. You know, we just mentioned we're recruiting the fastest guys, and we're recruiting guys with a little bit of bulk to them who aren't afraid to stick their nose in there versus a run, have the ability to play man coverage, and uh, and and do a great job uh, uh, in a in a with a blitz mentality, and uh, you know, coaching breakdown. The way we break down our defensive staff is we have one D line coach. He coaches the front four, and uh, he's got a graduate assistant with him. And we drop our end a good bit, and uh, so our our graduate assistant coaches that drop in guy. And sometimes that drop in could be the field end, sometimes it could be the boundary end. So he coaches all those guys uh, the same way. And then obviously the the two inside guys, we we try to play right and left with those guys as much as possible because of the what of, of the things we're doing with our front and the the things that the offense is doing to us, trading the tight end, moving the back to and from. Uh, a near and far set, and so we feel like with two guys coaching the defensive line, we should have an opportunity not only to coach the drop guys, but also a good opportunity to have those guys on the inside understand exactly what we're trying to do from a gap standpoint. We have uh, Mike Ward, our, our other co-defensive coordinator, coaching our two inside backers, and uh, we feel like that's a, that's, a, that's a good opportunity for those backers to, to not only understand gaps and defensive line movements, but also to understand uh, coverages and uh, exactly what they're trying to do from a from a from a drop standpoint. I coach the safeties and the star, and so uh, I have three positions that I'm responsible for. And uh, we also have a corners coach, and and uh, just like what we're trying to do with our four-two-five scheme is is uh, this day and age. I don't think it's uh, I don't think it's a, 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 a necessity to have two full-time defensive line coaches. We we feel like it's a, it's it's a, uh, imperative to have two defensive secondary coaches. And uh, what that allows us to do is not only split the, the coaching up from a safety corner standpoint, but what it allows us to do is during practice time is we stay group a good amount of time just for communication uh, purposes, but it allows us to focus on half the field. So myself will, will take one half the field, and our corners coach, Steve Klingscale, who came to us from Western Carolina, He'll handle the other half of the field, and we're on the same page from a terminology and coaching and scheme and, and uh, uh, teaching progression standpoint. And so that allows us to maximize our understanding from a secondary standpoint of the coverages and the checks that we're trying to get accomplished. Now, our coverage installation, we're going to be a, a combination of a middle closed football team and a middle open football team in this day and age. It's all about the quarterback. All you have to do is is look at the teams that have not only won the national championship, but look at the teams in, in MAC history who have won the MAC this past year. Buffalo did it with a four-year starter, and in previous years, Miami had Ben Roethlisberger, and Central Michigan has done a great job recently with Dan Lefevre. And uh, prior to that, Marshall was the was the king of the MAC, and they they only had two first-round draft picks at quarterback, and Byron Leftwich and and Chad Pennington. And so it's all about the quarterback and and our ability to affect the quarterback, not only from a from a pass rush standpoint, a pressure standpoint, but also from a variation in coverage, not just a disguise standpoint, but showing him different looks. So to make him not understand exactly what you're going to get every time, because if you, if you show him middle closed all the time, they're going to know exactly where to go with the football. And, and conversely, if you show him middle open all the time, they're going to know where to go with the football. They're well coached. We've got great coaches in this league, and, and they're great players as well with great arms and the ability to get the ball to to, to a wide receiver who's got plenty of speed and can make one guy miss, and, and, and after that, it, the, uh, the instruments are up. And so from a, from a coverage standpoint, we want to install our coverages on a, on a, horizontal, uh, on a horizontal line. And, and some, some guys uh, that I've been with, and, 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 and we've tried to do this before, we, they install vertically. So what that means is when you install vertically, you go down, you go from the top to bottom with your middle open coverages. Okay, and you struggle always to get to your middle close coverages because of the fact that you're trying to teach in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a progression of letting the kids understand how we play one coverage uh, uh, concept or the other. 
And so what we want to do is we want to, we want to install both our middle open and our middle closed coverages starting with day one. Now you say, now oh, that sounds like a heck of a lot to, to do, uh, Coach. But what we try to do is we try to have as much carryover as possible in each coverage concept, whether it's middle open or middle closed, such that we can, we can carry that over into our variations of both concepts. So let's say if we're, if we're playing a quarters concept or a three deep concept, the terminology that we're going to use, whether it's man free or so just, just good old fashioned three deep coverage, it's going to be the same other than the corners and the underneath guys who are playing truly man. The middle of the field guy is going to be taught exactly the same. Now whether it's a quarters coverage or a two deep coverage, if the middle is open, then we're going to try to teach those guys in a similar fashion. The underneath droppers, okay, the corners, and the safeties, they're all going to be taught from a standpoint of here's our technique when the middle is open. And so what we try to do is we try to, we try to install horizontally. And uh, what that allows us to do, not only is it forces you as a coach to coach those guys in a variety of, of situations, because you guys know as well as I do, when you get in the middle of a football game and you, and you want to change it up on that quarterback because you feel like that offensive coordinator's got a beat on you or the quarterback's getting comfortable back there, and you've got a doubt in your mind as to whether or not your kids can transfer from a middle open concept to a middle close, and then, then, then it causes a little bit of hesitation in, in, in you, and, and, and that turns into hesitation in, in your players. And we don't want that, so we want to teach those guys from day one that we've got to be able to go from, from concept to concept, and we start that uh, uh, day one, meeting one, practice one, such that that's, that's not a, a doubt in our mind as a coaching staff, and that's not a doubt in their mind as a player. They can go out on the football field, and whether it's a fast break offense or whether it's a huddle offense, they can jump from concept to concept, still keeping it as simple as we possibly can. Okay, and so if we can install from a horizontal standpoint from day one, then we feel like we got an opportunity to teach those kids how to be multiple, not only in our coverage concepts, but our fronts and our pressures as well. Now, why 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 the spread offense? Uh, why the four-two-five defense? Well. I'm sure it, it, you guys are the same way. As, you know, I go across the country recruiting, and I watch a, 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 a college football film from a variety of different conferences, and I, and I also watch some of the NFL stuff, and, and you look at the stuff that the Miami Dolphins are doing. It's a, it, the wildcat formation is a variation of the spread. Uh, and, and, and not only that, but specifically what we're trying to do, our goal at the University of Toledo is to win a Mid-American Conference. We talked about wanting to put as much speed on the football field as possible. The other thing that we just mentioned from a coverage standpoint and a front standpoint was the versatility of the package that we want to employ here at the University of Toledo. The multiple tempo offenses that we're seeing these days, I don't, I don't know that, that uh, this day and age in the Mid-American Conference, that we'll see a true huddle football team on a down-to-down -down basis at all this year. And so uh, we, we not only want to win the Mid-American Conference, but we want to take this program to the BCS. And, and so we feel like from a standpoint of getting our kids in the best position, putting them, putting them, uh, having the ability to make a play, that uh, the 4 2 five defense is the best answer for us. And so uh, that's what we're going to try to employ here, and, and uh, we're hoping we, we can have a, a lot of success, obviously. And uh, we, we've had a great spring this spring and putting this thing in and, trying to get our guys to understand as much as possible about just overall football knowledge, offensive terminology, what they're thinking when they're in certain formations. And the, we feel like, especially in the secondary, the more you can educate those players on what offenses do by certain personnel and certain uh, formations, the better off they're going to be no matter what type of defensive scheme you employ. Now, why, why fit a square peg in a round hole? We, we addressed this briefly in terms of talking about a Sam linebacker in space. That's not the best matchup that we're looking for. Linebackers and D-line versus speed and, 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 and pass drops, we, we don't, we don't want to put ourselves in a position to, to, to force a defensive lineman or a linebacker to match up versus speed because the offense is going to give you a variety of formations, and they're going to formation you to a certain point where you can't, you can't help but have that matchup with that they're dreaming of, that, that, that slot receiver versus the drop defensive lineman, or that slot receiver goes in motion and now he's matched up 
on your Will linebacker or your Mike linebacker if they get you in an empty formation. The other thing is, from a defensive rotation standpoint, we want to put as many fresh, fresh bodies on the football field as possible, and we spend 16 scholarships on guys in the secondary. And, uh, and we want a little bit of return on that investment. And so hopefully, from a rotation standpoint, we can, we can coach up as many defensive backs as possible, get them in there, and keep those legs fresh. And that's going to allow our defensive line to pass rush better. That's going to allow our linebackers to play the run better and allow them to run to the football as much as possible. More offensive awareness. We talked about that. In a, in, a, in, a, in a perfect world, we'd love those defensive linemen to understand formations and personnel, but that's probably not going to happen because they don't see formations. Their hand is in the dirt. The same, the same thing with the linebackers. You know, you, you can do skelly, or, or what we call skelly, but it's a seven-on-seven seven drill as much as you want. But when it comes right down to it, those guys are going to play the run first, and that's what they've got to do. They've got to play their, their run gap responsibility first, obviously unless it's you know, third and long or, 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 or certain, certain situations. But they're going to play those things. And, uh, and, and, and so from a, just an offensive awareness standpoint, we feel like our secondary guys have more awareness just in general because of the fact that they can see exactly what's going on from an offensive standpoint. Now, we talked about who we're recruiting. Guys, we're recruiting guys to fit into certain positions. By the same token, we're recruiting guys uh, uh, who are the best available. Okay, and so we're not like uh, the University of Florida or, or, or some of these other top ten powers who can go out and hand pick and say we're going to take one safety and one corner and one defensive lineman and, and go on down the road. We're going to go out there, we're going to turn over as many rocks as possible, and we're going to try to find the best football players with as much speed as possible. And we talk, you can see the breakdown right there, not only of where we're recruiting, but what we're looking for in a defensive line nose. We're going to recruit a nose, a tackle, a defensive end, a field end, okay, and what we call a Leo. That's, guy, that's our guy that we're trying to drop as much as possible. Now, we train both those guys we mentioned earlier. We train both those guys uh, in a similar fashion, but as much as possible, we try, we try to role play those guys in order that we can get our Leo, who is our more athletic guy, because it's really hard to find those two defensive ends that are the same. Oftentimes, at our level, and Marshall and and, and University of Toledo, we just have two different guys, and, and so we try to put those guys in the best position to do what they're capable of doing. And Mike and the Will, those guys basically need to be the same player in this day and age. They both need to be able to drop. I don't, I don't know that the days of in the Mid-American Conference playing with a big Mike linebacker who's a B-gap to B-gap football player is, is, is what you want. And we talked about the star, the strong, and the free. And uh, the corners, we play a field and boundary uh, uh, really – when you look at it, we really train those guys from a left corner and a right corner because of the no, no, uh, the no huddle offense, the fast tempo that we see. They've got to be able to know it all. And uh, oftentimes, your third corner, okay, is, is, is maybe a boundary corner. But guess what? The field corner gets hurt, and he's got to go in there and play field corner because you don't want your fourth guy to go in just because he's a field corner. We want our next best player on the football field. And so from that standpoint, we say field and boundary, but really it's a right and a left. Uh, uh, from the day one of training camp. Now, we get into certain game plans and, and face certain football teams who we know are huddle teams or we are going to have the ability to flip-flop those guys, then that's what we're going to do. Now, we talked about our, 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 our coaching breakdown and who we're coaching and how we're going to do it, and so we're going to keep moving from there. You see right down there at the bottom the dime and the viper. Now, those are spots that are, are in, our, in, our, in our dime package, okay? And so what they are is they're, they're specific positions to our dime package where now not just not only do we have five DBs, but we got six DBs on the football field, and, uh, and we're going to move those guys around, and, and we just give them tag names and code names so that they have an idea of what position they're playing. It's hard to tell a, a safety, a free safety, that, hey, you're going in at Will Linebacker, but you can get them fired up about playing that position, even though it really is just a Will Linebacker, if you call it something cool like the Viper. And so we try to, we try to tag those names and give those kids a, a, a role, role on our football team, and, and we want to get as many kids on the football field as possible. Now, we start from a standpoint of a middle-closed football team. So day one, we talked about not only do we want to work horizontally, but the first coverage we're going to put into 
uh, we're going to install is our 3D concept. Now we're going to do this a variety of different ways, not only with our, our, our four down rush, but we're also going to play this 3D concept with our fire zones. That's, that's, when, we, that's when we bring five uh, 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 guys one way or the other, and sometimes we're dropping it in, and sometimes we're just, we're just rushing all four D linemen with a safety blitzing or a linebacker blitzing. Uh, those, those concepts for the corners and for the, for, the, for the safeties are very, very similar. And so from a standpoint of, of a teaching progression, you can get multiple different three deep looks versus your spread stuff out of this 4-2-5 defense just because of the carryover <clears throat> of how you're teaching those players in the back end, which is the most important from a, from a, multiple, from a multiple three deep standpoint. I'm going to show you a little bit about this as we go forward, but we're going to rotate our, our, our safeties. We're going to rotate them strong. We're going to rotate them weak, and we're going to insert them into the box a little bit um, and, and, and try, to, try, to, try to mess with some of the blocking schemes that the, uh, that, the, that the zone read teams employ and the quarterback run teams employ. And, and the zone read bubble stuff is, uh, is stuff that uh, is, 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 a, is, a, is a headache for most of us defensive coaches. But we feel like sometimes when you, when you insert those safeties into the box and, 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 and walk out the will linebacker, uh, you've got an opportunity to, to try to mess with those big, big, uh, big uglies up front on the offensive line. And so uh, our, our base communication, as you can see right there on the screen, is what we call a tray call. And what we're going to do with the tray call is that, that just determines for the safety exactly where he's ro rotating down. He's just going to say tray right or tray left. Now our base, when we call cover three, what that means is, is we're going to look out and we're going to find the star. And we're going to rotate the safety down opposite the star. Now this is just good old-fashioned three deep coverage